uh, guys, welcome to the Gotta Have Miami podcast. And we're on a roll. This is like our third one, like really in a quick. Week. Yeah. In a week. Yeah, we're really going. I think it's episode 37. Yes. And again, I'm going to have Ash do our intro. So intro us, Ash. Welcome to the Gotta Have Miami show where we talk about culture and politics and see how it's woven in with real estate, specifically in our Miami market. There you go. That's actually, you're getting really good at it. Yeah, it's getting yeah, more concise right? exactly. and tight. Yeah, really. <laughs> so we're down here at a, a new listing that we're gonna be getting. It's uh, down in Coconut Grove. There's a little house back there. Great lot. Um, it's beautifully lined with oak trees that won't get in your way if you want to build. knock down the house yeah. and build. And that's one of the uh, options that is here. You can either refresh or rehab the house mm -hmm. or actually just uh, go in, uh, drop it, and you have uh, over a 9,000 square foot lot. Yeah, you got a nice yeah. lot. So maybe you're putting a nice new construction. Nice new construction, yeah. Idea. Or, yeah, absolutely. And again, it's going to be priced that under. It'll be coming to market probably by the end of the week. Uh, so if you have any questions, just you can always reach out or DM us, as those, <laughs> as the young people say. DM us, and if you do some clicking and get to our website, you'll yep. just get a phone number. You can exactly, call us. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You can call, yeah, call, call us. But again, we're here in uh, Coconut Grove, and uh, and Ash, you found out one thing this week that they said about Coconut Grove. What was that? Um, they, there's an article released: the 50 coolest, quote unquote, coolest, coolest cities in the world. Bro. And uh, Coconut Grove made the cut. We made the cut. Now, we made the cut. I, so when Ash sent me this, I always say that any time that you make any list that says you're cool, you have become uncool. <laughs> and that's always been... That's always been my takeaway. Like, remember if you drove Jeeps and uh, people used to have like the little thing that used to peace out, peace out. And then what ended up happening is Jeep then promoted it on their uh, commercials. Not cool. Not cool. Immediately, nobody went this like anymore. Everybody's like, eh, nothing. <laughs> so yeah, don't, so don't do it. So, you know, so hopefully we will stay cool. Uh, we are getting into our weather season. We're getting another cold front yeah, through, so it'll be really nice. You feel it in the air. It's you not do. too humid today. You, so you won't see me sweating and dripping with uh, <laughs> my mascara. Uh, so, yeah. So, again, we're here in Coconut Grove in a brand new listing. And uh, I think uh, one of the other topics, uh, we've been hitting on the feds uh, and the Federal Reserve. When I mean the feds, the Federal Reserve is not the guys that come after you. Uh, but the Federal Reserve has been jacking up interest rates and interest rates and interest rates. We're expecting another one in October, excuse me, in November, and we're expecting another one in uh, December. either December and probably February. And what they're doing is, it's funny, after we've been talking about this, there have been several articles uh, in prominent uh, publications yeah. that are starting to say, hey, listen, maybe we have to re really reassess uh, how we're looking at the cost of living inc uh, increase, the CPI, and some of the other uh, costs, because shelter, which is rent and purchase, mm -hmm. shelter is uh, about 30, 35% of the inflationary uh, statistics. And you know how I hate statistics. Yeah. <laughs> but these guys are actually real, and I think what the feds are doing is they're inadvertently creating a housing crisis. Yeah, they're adding to the one that's yeah. already existing. It's already existing. You're yeah. never going to you're never going to be able to change the supply and demand. Dear feds, you're not changing supply and demand. We do not have enough supply. We you can't basically uh, regulate your way out of that situation. It's just not possible yeah this isn't sneakers like options yeah so. yeah yeah i can't call china <laughs> the chinese right now don't get me started with them but uh you can't call china and ask for a million more homes you just don't have the ability to do that right and i think what they're doing is they're not understanding this market and hopefully somebody in the federal reserve will like well, wake up i find it hard to believe that somebody in that level doesn't understand the market i mean how do you not factor in that we are already facing a mm -hmm. national housing crisis that raising interest rates isn't going to burden that, right. that crisis more. So, Dear Federal I, Reserve, if you're watching this, give us a call. We want to know your your take on this situation because you know better you know better and you're causing all sorts of hell and one of the other things too that we're already starting to hear and this is coming from the banking industry and by the way dear federal reserve you're really helping the banking industry a lot because poor them you know yeah, poor them like if they didn't have enough <laughs> issues with uh, their own problems but you're really helping them so a little stock tip maybe you want to jump into some of the uh, banking uh, action there but again we're not the, advisors yeah again. we're not advisors <laughs> take it at your own risk but I think the the reality of it is is that there the by doing all of these things by doing all of these increases we're starting we're starting to see that there's a possibility and we're starting to hear it from the in people that there could be a future uh, downward or uh, some pressure on people that have second mortgages right 
because now those are usually on the adjustable. They're usually based on, you know, treasury notes and all of those notes are going up. And then some of these are going up two, three, four, five, six, whatever they are, a percentage. And some people are starting to talk about foreclosures in the future and uh, towards the next year. Yeah. I don't see it. But at the end of the day, not here locally, not in not in where we are in Coconut Grove, but that could be, I mean, you're almost forcing a recession. You're almost for, forcing yet more pressure on the housing market. I just don't get it. I won't put my tinfoil hat on. No? No. Oh, put it on. Let's hear it. It's all on purpose. Don't get me started. Oh, all right. I don't even know what the purpose is. But, but you're going to tell me that they don't know what they're doing? I just, I, it is it is frustrating for us to see it because we just don't understand why in this housing market, uh, in a market that you cannot build more, that you cannot get more product out, and that you're just continuing to bang away at, at, at people. And again, I understand the food, I understand the fuel, I understand all of the uh, commodities aspect of right. it. But housing is 35%, it's sheltered, everybody needs it, and you guys are just putting so much pressure on it. So that's gonna be my continuous rant yeah, until, these, until these little federal guys stop raising rates uh, that affect the mortgage market and then are putting even Guys, I can't even tell you on the on the rental market. You're just basically taking so, all of these people yeah. off of the purchase market, which is competitive enough, and they're driving up numbers. We get that, but man, you're just killing the rental market. There's just no no rentals either. I'm working with a uh, renter looking for mm -hmm. somewhere to rent. And she's had, yeah. you know, she's specific to Coconut Grove, right. and it's a tough spot to be yeah. specific yeah. to. Yeah. And she's like, but I don't understand because she's lost a few offers mm -hmm. on full year, people who are paying the full right. year yeah. rent. Yeah. So she's lost out a few times on that because she doesn't have that opportunity. That's a lot more common than you, than you would expect. Yes. Because yeah. um, when I started in real estate, you told me cash up front on a lease is a red flag. It's a but red then flag. It's literally like almost Not, all the offers now. Yeah. So it's like hard to consider it a yeah. red flag. Yeah. In the old days, that was a red flag. Somebody that was in trouble, somebody they needed to get out of. They were paying six months up front or they're paying a year up front. That means they had some you know, some, something out there. So, right, something. Now it's not. Now it's, hey, I want this house. We're going to do this. Yeah. So We're talking about rentals. Yeah. Full year up front. Yeah. So she said to me, how come if somebody has enough money to put a full year up front on the lease, they don't buy? I said, well, in the condo market, yeah. you need at least 25% yeah. to buy. So you might have thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in the bank that you can pay a year yeah. of your rent, but you don't have sixty or seventy to buy. Yeah. And, and she's like, oh, yeah. you know? And it, so that's part of the strain on the rental market. Yeah. It's not that these renters don't have good jobs and good income yeah. and good uh, credit scores. It's just, there's no inventory yeah. for them. Yeah. I think, I, I hopefully also think that the mortgage industry and the mortgage market, I think they're starting to, you know, come up with some other innovative ideas. I know that we're gonna have something uh, that they're gonna buy down uh, interest, inter rates. interest rates. You yeah. know, usually used to buy them down with points. Maybe now there's a, there's a couple of other things. But again, we need to really, really reflect and, you know, let the market do what they wanna do, but, you know, the rates just can't keep climbing and expect that you're gonna solve this inflation problem that you are, you know, trying to solve out there. So yeah. that's the uh, that's the one thing. What else, it's Monday. It is Monday, Monday in Miami is Monday. always a, uh... Monday always Miami's fun. always, yeah, it's always a special place where your phone blows up and you get a bunch of phone calls over the weekend and uh, all of that. Goes. I was out in Kendall this weekend. Oh, congratulations. I mean, way out there. How far? Oh, 149th and That's down. That's not far. Come oh, on. it was way down there. It was. It took me forever to get, I packed breakfast. <laughs> it was that far. <laughs> I went to the nursery first, got stuff, and then went out to Kendall and I was out there. Actually, a really cute place. Do you, do you remember Villa Castillo? The little old one that we had on Kendall. Were you around when? No, uh, I don't remember. It's that. like one of those little townhomes. It's actually a really not, nice purchase. But I listed around four hundred grand, and it was actually good square footage. A little yard in the back. Actually, it was a nice option. Yeah. For uh, for uh, the, for our clients. So uh, so just that just tells you that we're just not in Coconut Grove. We yeah. we get around. We do get around. Yeah. Um, it's hard to just be in Coconut Grove as well because. There's not a lot of inventory. <laughs> and your market and your market and your market gets very limited. We've always been very involved in, in the general Miami Dade area and we've always felt that, you know, to to really help your clients, you're really trying to get them, you know, the best value that they can. Yeah. And the best options that are out there. So that's one of the things that we do here at Gotta Have. Gotta have Gotta Haves Miami. <laughs> so if you want to find out about this property, uh, give us a call, DM you, call, whatever. Call, DM. Right? Um, we will be posting some pictures on our social yep. media. And then by the end of the week, it'll be listed yeah, on the market it'll be, it'll and be up you can on the probably market. find it on any Zillow, Realtor, Google. Third party sites, which I have a uh, dis 
passionate, this passionate like, I hate the damn things, but it is what it is. The world today has changed. Yes. So. I mean, everybody uses them. I know. You know? I don't like them. They, they are, <laughs> they have all sorts of issues. By the way, when Zillow gets a hold of this listing, we will be getting a thousand phone calls because it's going to be listed under land value and under the value of Coconut Grove. So get ready because all of those bottom feeders are going to be coming. Sorry, Zillow. Bottom feeders are just going to be hitting on this big time charge your phone now charge my phone now yeah. so again it's um it's a new week it's a new week we're here we're if you here. have any questions reach out yeah. and uh thanks for joining thanks for joining us make sure to subscribe we need subscribers because that's what i'm told yeah. <laughs> so since i'm told that we need subscribers subscribe subscribe or send it to a friend to subscribe and by the way hold on before you leave go dolphins oh yeah oh. <laughs> three and three our dolphins are back to where they always are this they is... keep you watching because they keep you watching till the very end of the yeah. game. They're going to lose, but man, you are involved right until the very end. So, so they're back to their norm, huh? Yep. Thanks, Vince. I appreciate it. <laughs> Have a good week. Have a great week.